Section 9.8 is systems of linear and quadratic equations. I can solve systems of linear and quadratic equations. That's our learning target and what we're shooting for in this section. Big ideas here. Systems of linear and quadratic equations can be solved graphically and algebraically. Systems of linear and quadratic equations can have two solutions, one solution, or known solutions. And that's shown on page 596. They have some graphs there. In the first one where there's two solutions, we have a parabola and the line intersects it. So we have two solutions, two points of intersections. In the second one, we have a parabola and a line that just touches in one spot. Okay, so here we have one solution. And in no solutions, we'd have a parabola and a line that are completely independent of each other. Never meet, never cross, never touch. In example one here, we're going to solve by graphing. Um, so we have a system of equations here. I'm going to graph my first equation, um, which is quadratic. So I know it's going to end up being a parabola. And because I have this x term here, I have to start off by finding my axis of symmetry, or my middle. And in order to do that, it's negative b over 2a. So negative, my b value is minus 1 over 2 times a is 1. And I get 1 over 2. So x equals a half at my axis of symmetry. That also means half is my middle point. And I'm going to pick two numbers on each side of that. Half is in between 1 and 0 and negative 1 and 2. Now, I take that half and I substitute it into my equation here. I take all my x's and plug them in. So negative 1 squared minus negative 1 minus 2. I'm going to take 0 squared minus 0 minus 2. And we'll continue that. I went ahead and filled in that table there for us. Uh, again, I just plugged in those values and calculated to get my points there. So at negative 1, 0, and that's nothing new. We've done that all chapter. 0, negative 2, half, negative 2 and a quarter, 1, negative 2, and 2, 0. I'm not going to connect these yet, though, guys, because I want to see where my other line is going to be at. I want to make sure that um, I find where they meet exactly. So uh, my second line is linear, okay? Because it's just x to the first power, it's in slope-intercept form. The 2 is where I begin, and my minus 1 here in front of my x is my slope. It's how I move. I go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. And here, this point where I overlap is one of my solutions. I can also go up 1 over 1. And we can connect those with a straight edge. There we go. Now, uh, if I were to draw in my parabola on the right side, okay, I have enough points there so I would meet where I'm supposed to. But on the left side, if I draw in my branch here, I could go here or here. It doesn't We don't have that value yet, so we need to try some more points. So I'm going to try negative 2, my next point over. And I'm just going to substitute that in for x in my original equation for my parabola graph here to see what I get. And I get 4. So my point here will be right where those meet. Now I can connect my dots and have my parabola and my two points of intersection. So my solutions here are those points where they meet at 2, 0, and at negative 2, 4. Again, just like when we solved systems before, we need ordered pairs to show my x's and my y's. Now, feel free to pause here and give this a try if you'd like. I'm going to graph my first equation. And here, since I don't have that x value in the middle, my middle is going to be at 0 for my ordered pairs. Okay, my axis of symmetry is at 0. My b value here is like 0 x's, so it's negative 0 divided by 2 times 2, which gives me 0. Uh, when I don't have that x term in the middle, when I just have a binomial, um, 
then I can go ahead and use zero as my middle point and pick two numbers on each side of it. Now I substitute those in just like we did in the last example. So I make x negative 2. Again, I bring down everything and I make my x value negative 1 and so on. And I went ahead and filled in the rest of that table there. Uh, so now my points are at negative 2, 9. At negative 1, 3. 0, 1, 1, 3, and 2, 9. Now my second line here, linear. Okay, x to the first power. So I start at my intercept, 5. And I use my slope, the number in front of my x, my change there, negative 2 over 1, to find my re the rest of my points. So I go down 2 over 1, and here I cross, down 2 over 1. I can also go up 2, back 1, up 2, back 1. So we found our two points of intersection here. Uh, if we want to, we can go ahead and still draw in those lines. and our parabola here. And where they meet, remember, are our solutions. So one is going to be at 1, 3. The second one's going to be at negative 2, 9. And these ordered pairs are the set of x's and y's that make both equations true. They're our solutions. Uh, for b here, Again, um, because I have this x in the middle, I need to start off with negative b over 2a. So negative 1 over 2 times 1 is going to give me negative 1 half. And that's my axis of symmetry. So in my table of values, negative half is my middle. It's my axis of symmetry. It's where my vertex is. Now I want to pick numbers on each side. So negative 1 and negative 2, 0 and 1. I'm going to substitute those values in for my x, just like we have been. So negative 2 goes in for my x, square it, plus negative 2 plus 3. Negative 1 goes in for my x, I'll square it, plus negative 1 plus 3. And again here, I filled in that table for us. Uh, so now at negative 2, 5, I have a point. Negative 1, 3, I have a point. At negative half, 2 and 3 quarters at 0, 3, and at 1, 5. My second line here is linear. So I start at my intercept, which here happens to be 0, plus 0. My slope is negative 1, and we write whole numbers as over 1 as fractions. So I go down 1, over 1. And I can continue that pattern along. I can also go up 1, back 1. So if I connect my dots here on my linear equation, and I draw in my quadratic in the yellow, uh, I guess it's now in black, I hit the wrong color. I'll see that those two lines are never going to meet. Okay, this line and this one, my parabola and my line, uh, those two graphs, those two functions are never going to meet. So here, no solution. In example two, we're going to use elimination. Since opening day, attendance at pool A has increased steadily, while attendance at pool B first rose and then fell. Equations modeling the daily attendance Y at each pool are shown on page 597 where x is the number of days since opening day. On what day or days was the attendance the same at both pools? And then what was the attendance? So here are our equations. Uh, when we use elimination with systems where one of them is quadratic and one is linear, we have got to eliminate the y's. Okay, we're going to eliminate y here. I can't eliminate x's because if I get rid of my x and my x, I still have the x squared term. I can't get rid of my x's completely but I can get rid of my y's. And remember, when we use elimination, 
we need to start off by getting opposites. Here I don't have opposites, but I can get some if I multiply my entire top equation by negative 1. So when I do that, I get negative y, I get a negative 28x, and I'm going to line that up with my x's so it's easier to add them up. And negative 1 times 4 gives me a minus 4 here. And now that we have opposites, we can go ahead and add our equations. y plus negative y gives me 0. Negative x squared, I don't have anything to add to it, plus 11x minus, sorry, plus 60. Now, once we go to here, we're going to solve this the same way that we have been. So, uh, I want to get it set equal to 0, which I have. I also need my coefficient to be positive. We also could go to the quadratic formula at this point if you wanted to, uh, but I'm going to factor. So, I'm going to move things to the other side so that my x squared is positive. You can also just factor out your greatest common factor of a negative 1 if that works better for you. So I have x squared minus 11x minus 60 equals 0. Now we're going to factor. So we're going to multiply to 60, subtract to 11, which here are 15 and 4. Because 15 is bigger, it gets a sign in the middle. And because we subtracted and found the difference, our signs will be different, so plus 4. Now our zero product property from section uh, 9, 4, I believe, says that in order to multiply to 0, one of our factors has to be 0, or our other factor has to be 0, or both, if they both happen to be the same. And then we solve from there. And x is going to be 15, or x is going to be negative 4. Keep in mind though that our x is our number of days since opening day. So can x be negative 4? No. x can be 15 days though. So, uh, and on what days was the attendance the same day? The 15th day, or day 15. Now, what was the attendance? We want to know what is y, is our attendance. So, we take our x value of 15, and we substitute it into either equation in order to find y. So y equals 28 times 15 plus 4, for example. Again, I know what x is, so I substitute it in for x in my equation. Uh, here, I get 424. So 424 people went to the pool that day. Now, in example 2, suppose the daily attendance at pool A was modeled by the equation y equals 36x plus 54. On what days was the attendance the same, and what was the attendance? So here again, I need opposites before I can use elimination. So I'm going to multiply my entire second equation by negative 1. And when I do that, I then can add. And I get 0 equals negative x squared plus 3x plus 10. And if we wanted to from here, we could go right into the quadratic formula. Um, a is negative 1, B is 3, C is 10. Uh, we can also do it just like we did in the last one where we set it equal to 0 and factor. Uh, but negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times 10 all over 2a. 3 squared is 9 plus negative 4 times negative 1 times 10 gives me a positive 40. Negative times a negative gives me a positive. So here I get 49. And I know that the square root of 49 is 7. So I'm going to take negative 3 plus 7 and get positive 4 divided by negative 2 gives me negative 2. And negative 4 minus 7 gives me negative 10 divided by negative 2 gives me 5. So my x values here are negative 2 and 5. So again, we can use the quadratic formula. We can't have negative 2 days. So on what day was the attendance the same? Day 5. And to figure that value out, we substitute it back in. So y equals 36 times 5 plus 54. And here I get y equals 234 people. At this point, I'm going to stop, and I'll continue on in another video.